Let us take a look back over what Lesson 4.1 was about. Chapter 4 is a chapter on what we call functions, very similar to the equations we worked with in Chapter 3. And we're going to specifically talk about, in this lesson, representing relationships. Relationships between numbers. How is one number related to some other number in our function, our relationship? Let's start by taking a look at example one and seeing if we can use any skills we've used before in this problem to help us solve it. All right. Example one states Malik earns $8.50 per hour. We're going to come back and talk about why I marked that. Washing cars. $8.50 per hour washing cars. Write an equation to find how much money, we're going to call that M, Malik earns for any number of hours H. Let's use some of the information that we marked. I circled in an important number, 850, 8.5. Well, what does this per represent? We've talked about in many lessons that per means I'm going to multiply, I'm going to be multiplying by a number. In this case, the number of hours they told us that is H. So I'm going to have some sort of equation or expression that says 850 multiplied by H or 8.50 H. Well, what is that going to equal? In our problem, we have one other letter we haven't used, M. Well, that is because in order to find M, M is equal to this 850 times H. Now, this equation is an equation you guys will use a lot later on in high school when you guys start finding your own jobs. You're going to want to figure out, you know, what it is that you're going to make each paycheck, or is this job better than the next job? All based around, well, if I work so many hours, and I multiply that by how much I make per hour, my rate, I can figure out my total income. So it's stated to help us along, let M represent the money earned and H represent the number of hours worked, which we did, and built the same equation that they would give. But the equation is M equals 8.5 H. I would accept either. I would accept 8.5 or 8.50. In this case, they both mean the same thing. In terms of if this was a standardized multiple choice test, they would ask for the most simplified one. So we'll want to recognize that this is more simplified than writing that zero. So now we have the equation. Let's answer the next question they want us to look at. And how much will Malik earn if he works four hours? Well, when we have four hours, I should really circle the whole thing. Hours was H. So we're going to change and make that H equal four. Well, if H equals four, and I have an H in my equation, it's going to be just as simple as I'm going to rewrite my equation. M equals 8.5 H. Next, I am going to replace H with 4, or I'm going to plug it in. Instead of 8.5 times H, it's 8.5 times 4. Again, that's the 4 from right here. And all I do have to do now is 
actually do the multiplication. 8.5 times 4. You can check your calculator or you could do it by hand. You should find the answer of m equals 34. Let's see how that compares to their work. Looks like it all came out all right. So in this case, with making 850 per hour, after working four hours, Malik will earn $34. Not bad. That right now is one of the ways we can represent a relationship. We could create some sort of equation that represents how the numbers are related. How is four related to 34? And how is that reflected with the 8.5? Now, let's see other ways we could represent this relationship. All right. Next, it says make a table to find his earnings if he works 7, 8, 9, or 10 hours. Then graph the ordered pairs. Well, let's see how they're doing that. And really, we're going to use the equation to find each of these numbers. What we have here is we fill in the 7, 8, 9, and 10 under our hours. So in this case, H equals 7 and H equals 8. And I want to figure out, well, what does M equal when I do that? Well, for the first one, we would solve what is 8.5 times 4. I'm sorry, back up a little bit. We're talking about 7 right now. 7. If you plug that in your calculator or solve it by hand, you should end up with an answer of $59.50. $59 and we would go back and do that again. We would look at what is 8.5 this time times 8. That answer will be 68. There is a trick to this, and we're going to see how it works once I do this next one. If we check what is 8.5 times 9, that comes out to 76.5. If you notice along the side of the chart, it is showing me that each of these numbers is growing by 8.5. When we talked about equations of graphs, in chapter 3 we did a bunch of graphing. And we looked at tables to figure out whether something was linear or nonlinear. And we talked about rate of change. In this case, to tie it all together, we have a rate of change. Whenever we had our equation of 8.5h, we have a rate of change. We also called it at some time a slope. Rate of change, I'm going to abbreviate, is the 8.50. That means all my numbers in the money column increase by that positive 8.50. We could check that out. We could look at that. 76.5. If I add 8.5 to it, is that going to give me my answer? 0, 0, carry the 1. Let's see, 8 plus 6, that is 14. Carry the 1, and I get 8. Well, let's uncover that and see, is that 84? Ah, see, I said one thing and wrote another. That is not a 4. That is a 15. Always correct me if I do that in class. So there's two ways we could go about this. No matter what, you're going to end up having to plug in at least once to find one of the numbers. 
and then you keep adding each time to fill in the chart. It all depends on your style. The very last part of this is it asks us to graph the ordered pairs. Now this one's already pre-set up, but you're going to have to at times create your own graph. Meaning you're going to have to figure out what scale you want for the x-axis and what scale you want for the y-axis. You always want to make sure your graph takes up as much of the grid as possible. And also we can't skip numbers. Notice that even though our chart starts at 7, we had to write 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. We couldn't just skip to 7 and start counting. You've definitely talked about that in your science classes. Now, for this graph, they chose to increase by 10s. 10, 20, 30, 40, and so on. And, and the same idea, even though the first number we see is 49.5, we couldn't just start our graph here at 50. We had to include every number in between. Now, to graph these ordered pairs, I mean, we don't really see any ordered pairs yet. Let's talk about what happened when we created this chart. This chart allows us to take our numbers and now create an ordered pair, where instead of X, we have an H, and instead of Y, we have an M. So I can take each of my numbers now and say, oh, well, that should be the coordinate, it's 7, comma, 59.50. 8, comma, 68.00. Nine, comma, seventy six point five zero, and then ten, comma, eighty five. As a quick review, let's talk about how to put this point on a graph. We start with the first one. Our first number our h or our x value for thinking about x and y graphs is 7 meaning i need to count over 7 to get my first number on the graph once i count over 7 that m or our y tells us up or down if it's positive we count up to 59.5 which is really close to 60 giving us this point here now we could do that again with 8, 68. We count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, over, and then up to the 68. We would do that again to plot the next point, and then our final point. One thing I want to point out here is notice since I was connecting this to linear before, notice that these four points, they create a straight line. This one, this problem, this example, is an equation of a linear relationship. As we move forward, we will start using nonlinear relationships, but for right now, let's focus on ones we are more familiar with. Note, I did not draw my line here. We do not need to draw our line for this example. All right, I suggest pausing the video, going back and watching through that example again. Because I'm not gonna spend as much time as I go over these two completely blank examples. I'm gonna run through it as if I'm solving a normal problem. Feel free to pause, rewind, and start over at any point in the video. All right, problem number one, cars. A car dealer sells 12 cars per week. Per means to multiply. And I'm gonna take a look at how I can use that. Write an equation 
to find the number of new cars sold, which is C, in any number of weeks, W. Well, if I go back, I've already noted that I have to do 12 times something. Well, it says 12 per week, so that's 12 per W. So 12 times W, or 12 W, well, that's going to equal that total number of new cars. So for part A, I could create the equation C equals 12 W. That original description gives me a hint on which letter belongs where. B. Make a table to find the number of new cars sold in five, no, four, five, six, or seven weeks. Then graph the ordered pairs. Let's start with the first task. Going to our chart, what I want to know is, if I start with W equals 4, what is C going to equal? Or when W is 5, 6, or 7? To find that, I'm going to start with, well, what is 12? Instead of 12 times W, I will now say 12 times 4. Well, that's 48. Then I would continue 12 times 5, which is 60. 12 times 6, which is 72. And then 12 times 7. Now, I'll be honest, 12 times 7 is not one that I would pick off off the top of my head. I would go back up to that shortcut I mentioned before. From 48 to 60, and then to 72, we're just adding 12 to get a new number. So if I want 12 times 7, I can start at 12 times 6 and figure out, well, what's 72? And then add another 12 to that to get 84. Again, that is not one I would do in my head. I know that it's much faster for me to use another strategy you guys can use whatever strategy is valid. Whichever one works best for you. So now I have some coordinates. I have some ordered pairs. I can put on the graph the following. I could graph 4, comma 48, 5, comma 60, 6, 72, and 7, 84. Our graph is not complete, but let's fill in our numbers. We always start with 0, and there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 spaces across. My chart starts at 4 and increases by one each time. So I'm going to use a scale where I'm going to increase all my numbers by one across the x-axis. But I'm going to have to start at one, two, three, four, and so on because I'm not allowed to just skip. Now let's see what we can do to put 48, 60, 72, and 84 on the graph. There are a couple different ways. More commonly, we know if we count up by tens and get 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and so on, we could actually fit all of these on the graph. Now you can sometimes use more unconventional, meaning not as common scales. I'll be honest with you, I would have probably used a scale of 12 and counted up by 12, but this is more common. I start by counting over 1, 2, 3, 4, and up, let's see, 48 is not quite to 50. It's probably about there, whether that, oh, I apologize, right where this dot is. And I would ask to go ahead and label it. 
just so we know that's exactly where it's at. I do the next where I go to 5 and then up to 60. That one's easier. It's right on one of our grid marks. Then 6 up to 72, which is a little above 70. So I'll place it about there. You could also notice that these three dots are in a straight line. That's important because this is going to be a linear relationship. And now from 7 up past the 80, not quite in the middle, I'd say put a point right there for 7, 84. I apologize, it's a little difficult to write on a tablet. But there we go. That would be our full answer for number one. We have our equation, our charts filled in, and then our graph. I'm going to scroll down to number two. I want you to pause this. I want you to read it, and on your own, create the equation. Create your own table and see if you can't finish filling it in. I understand about not doing the graph because you probably don't have graph paper with you. But again, try to do part A and that first part of B on your own. And then start the video back up and all the answers will be here. Pause it now. All right, now for the answers. When I read, an author writes four pages, sorry, I should have circled that, per day. So that means I have four times something. We'll see what day is supposed to represent. Write an equation to find the number of pages, P, written after any number of days, D. All right, so day, which was up here, is D. So I'm going to have four times D. 4 times D will tell us how many pages are being written in a day. Therefore, P equals 4 D, 4 times D. So that's the very first part, first answer. Now let's fill in the table. Table is 4. Finding the numbers of pages the author writes in one, two, three, or four days. I see it's not actually written there, but I'm going to use my best guess that four was that next number. So let's see what we get. If I do four times, well, D is one, so that's four. Four times two, that's eight. And then we could go about this any other way. You could keep doing now 4 times 3, or you could add 4 for 12, and then 16. That is up to you. All right, for this graph, I'm going to do something a little different. You could, again, count by 1s along the bottom, but I only need 4 numbers on that graph. So I'm going to space out my numbers a little bit and say instead of putting one here at the first mark, I could actually place one at the second mark and then skip over and at the fourth mark put a two. Skipping every two spots to space out my graph. All of my numbers fit and I didn't skip anything. Now. I can do the same thing to put these numbers for the P column on the graph. We could count by four, but that would kind of squeeze our graph a little small. But they're all even. So I'm going to go and count up by twos. And as you see, I'm able to fit every number on our chart on that axis, meaning I can now put my points. 
my first coordinate should be at one comma four. So I start at the one, I count up to the four and put a dot. One comma four. Followed by two comma eight. So two up eight. Three comma twelve. So three up twelve. We see our line forming. And then four comma sixteen. Again, go back and pause at any point. This is just a kind of remind us and re kind of look back at that lesson we did before. We will be reviewing this but I want to make this available to you to use at any point.